Now, I have covered all of the faction frigates that are currently available in the game, and it's time to take a look at the assault frigates. Now, the assault frigates are actually very similar to the assault cruisers, at least role wise. They are robust, they can be very tanky, they can be fairly fast, and their DPS output is really good. Now, today I'll be flying the Punisher Assault, this is basically the first Assault Frigate that I'll be flying, and when I was younger, I always thought that the Punisher looked like a shoe, but now I actually really enjoy the design of this ship. Alright, let's take a look at the uh, description. Robos, plus 5 seconds damage control activation time. Advanced Mic Warp Drive Operation Boss will give you minus 10% Warp Drive Signature Radius Penalty. Minus 5% warp drive capacity unit, and the advanced frigate Comamos will give you plus 9.5% small laser damage. It will give you minus 10% small laser capacity unit, and it will give your ship plus 4% armor resistance. Overall, pretty solid. Now, the Punisher has 3 high slots, 3 medium, 3 low, 3 combat, and 3 engineering rigs, 3307 overall defense. The Punisher is a armor tank, because of the armor bonus that we get from the skills. A decent capacitor, as to be expected from armor ships, it can lock 5 targets. Signature is 51.5, skin resolution is actually really good, 836, and the strength is 13.4. The Punisher is definitely not the fastest, although it's still not the slowest. It's a fairly fast little frigate. Okay, now on to the build, and this is where things get really interesting with uh, with these assault frigates. Now I have 246.67 DPS, this is with the Imperial Navy beam lasers. They have a very solid uh, range, 14.3 kilometers. Now the first build is a kite build with a armor repair, dual webs, one long range point and the damage control because Usually ships that have a micro object bonus are kite ships and they, the micro object is actually really good on kiting ships to stay away from webs and scramblers. For the rigs I have laser burst adapters, two of them and one collision accelerator. And in the engineering rigs I have three ancillary power grid routers. Now you can go with tier 1 rigs or tier 2 rigs, the difference is not going to be that much but the power grid might be a problem especially if you want to replicate this build, the armor resistance is actually really good for a frigate. The speed is also really good and the, well, the capacitor 27 seconds. This is one aspect of the ship that I will have to improve. Now I have the Amar NCO core that gives me plus 16.80% laser damage, although I mostly picked this core because I thought that it looks good you can basically use any other core that's available. The Wheel of Steel core is actually, I would say, the best because it does give you extra armor repair and that one is actually really good. You can create a ridiculously tanky frigate with that one. And we also have a lot of blue nano cores that are available on the market also. Really good, some of them give you extra thermal, some of them give you extra EM damage. Again, that's actually uh, a really good stat that you can get from the blue nano core which is available on the market and you can easily reverse engineer the core and build it. Let's go and take a look at the implants. Now since this is a laser boat we have two options pulse crystal, focus crystal or actually the thermal circulation for tank. Now the focus crystal is going to have uh, a, a different layout in terms of general units. I will focus on maximum possible capacitor runtime because 27 seconds isn't much to be honest, but you do repair a lot and the capacitor does recover very quickly. So if you are using the kite build at a long range then you are not going to be taking much damage or you will, you will be taking little damage and you will not be using the armor repair at all time. But in case, uh, I'll be honest, I don't really like the, the capacitor runtime, so I'll probably uh, think of something else throughout this video. I'll show you a lot of builds for this little boat. Alright, but first let's show 
this current fit in action and let me show you the DPS output. Now for the implants I always say level 15 is more than enough. Having the two general units is also more than enough so you don't have to go to level 45 it's overkill. 15, 20 or 30 is basically what uh, I have on my implants. 19,000 hit points, 88, 84, 81 and 80% resistance which is you know really good. And you can match the you can match the damage control with the armor repair. That way, you can ensure that you take minimal damage while repairing maximum possible armor. It has 1,839 armor hit points, so the medium armor repair will definitely repair that in a couple cycles. And overall, I'm very very satisfied with the. With the armor tank, the DPS is okay, 427.56, and when the implant is fully charged, it should be around 800, but I will show you that in a moment. 690 point, well actually nice, 690.69, that's not a coincidence, that's definitely not a coincidence. 2.3 kilometers per second is the micro speed 104 meter is the signature radius which is quite small should be quite difficult to hit with with medium turrets small turrets will probably track well although even small turrets might have an issue now the next build involves the passive tank with a 400 millimeter reinforced steel plate this will give you a lot of armor but it will slow down your ship a little bit and the power grid is still uh, almost 100% used. So let's take a look at the implants. Now for the implants if you're using an armor plate I would go with the passive armor plate hit point buff. It will give you extra 20% armor from the armor plate and I will go with the overheat, not over, not overheat on the plate, overheat on the afterburner because now I have no active tank so I can afford to push the capacitor to its limits with the output boost unit for the afterburner. It will also increase the afterburner speed of this little boat to make it faster. I feel like the assault frigates are excellent against big ships. I can see them uh, do well against some cruisers and in some cases battle cruisers, although I would avoid fighting drone boats. Drone boats might be dangerous, but long range ships that you catch up close are going to be easy targets. Battleships probably as well because they will not be able to track you. For battleships I have a, uh, I have a build that I will show you on this little boat. Basically works on, on all frigates. 11,060 hit points for 0.4 thousand armor, which is actually really solid and I can get some and good speed with the general unit. And you can use the same unit layouts on the pulse crystal, although the pulse crystal does use more capacitor, so I would prefer to use the focus over the pulse if you don't have a Nosferatu, although the pulse can be really good if you have a capacitor battery or a Nosferatu on the ship with a brawling pulse laser build, which I will show you in just a second but first let me undock and let me see the active stats of this current build undocking the assault ships work really well with the with the passive tank i do the same th i did the same thing on the omen and i believe on the stabber too and the same thing can be applied to the assault frigates after all they have about the same role and they can be very interesting. Okay, now the implant is active. 461.23 DPS with the beam lasers, 2.8 kilometers per second with the mic warp drive, and this is a kite build, long range. Now it says stable capacitor. Well, if that if that's stable, then I don't know. Sometimes the the fitting window does like to to troll. So yeah, but not a big deal. The well, the active stats on the um, on the plate build is actually really good. Now, of course, uh, I might not be able to use the plate 
with this kind of build you rely on the passive buff you don't really activate the plate because it will kill your capacitor so only a fully passive use but the damage control should give you a really good resistance stat for 18 seconds after all you have the bonus on the damage control and those 18 seconds of immortality can be very important now you can do the same build with the pulse lasers and this time the power grid should be a little bit less used and with the pulse lasers I prefer to use an afterburner because in brawling fights you need to have an afterburner the mic warp drive will be disabled if your target if your opponent uses a scrambler and you want to make sure that you have more speed than your target or at least to have a similar speed so an afterburner is recommended and have the plate the damage control afterburner and Dulab's long range point, al although you can also use a scrambler in this case. And the general unit layout should be about the same. I'll just swap the mic warp drive unit into an afterburner unit. And with the afterburner, I will go with the output boost so that the ship goes a little bit faster than usual. Okay, that should do it. And now let me show you the active stats of this little boat. You know, I actually was very close to obtain the, um, one of the implants for my alt. I had enough ISK, uh, but unfortunately, well, you know what happened. So it's uh, it's very easy to obtain the the basic the basic implants or the experimental ones. Basically, the one that unlocks level 15. So it's not a really not a really big deal. It can be grindy, but you know, with a little bit of effort, you can get that in, in a day or two, basically. Now the DPS is much better. The capacitor is also, uh, well, it it's actually less, less stable somehow, but uh, 2 minutes is fairly good. And 1.3 kilometers per second is the afterburner speed. Again, I'm pretty happy with the current result. Now, this is a build that I show you on the um, on the Daredevil and I replicated this build on the Punisher Assault. With this build you can basically kill a Balagorn if you catch the Balagorn at zero and if the Balagorn doesn't have any steps because the Balagorn will not have enough tracking to hit you and it will not have enough ability or not. It will not be able to kill your capacitor completely because you have the small Nosferatu and with good skills, you can run the whole frigate on 1% capacitor. So, a build like that uh, is good for battleships, anti battleship build if you are a frigate pilot. You can also use something like this a passive armor tank with a adaptive, with a adaptive armor hardener, a small capacitor battery, and a medium neutralizer. Although with this build I actually recommend that you go with capacitor rigs because you want to make sure that your own capacitor is running for as long as possible. Uh, as possible. The units can be used for the capacitor battery passive effect and you can increase the neutralizer strength or the neutralizer range. And I can actually swap the afterburner into a better afterburner, finally. You can also use a scrambler if you are orbiting at 14 kilometers or 13 kilometers. That's about uh, the edge. That's about the maximum range on the scrambler. And well, this build might be interesting. 2 minute and 24 second is the capacitor runtime. This is with pole feathers. 331.14 DPS. And with beam lasers, you can. Uh, oh, my apologies. This is actually with the beam lasers. Okay. With the beam lasers, uh, you can match the range of the neutralizer at 12 kilometers, should be pretty close to your optimal range. And you can use a micro warp drive for a kite build with the long range disruptor. Also works really well, even if you're orbiting at 20 kilometers. With a general unit, you can make the range of the neutralizer about 18 kilometers, which for a frigate is really solid. And that should, that should empty the capacitor of of small ships, even big ships might have a problem with a medium neutralizer working on them. Okay, well, let's take the Punisher Assault for a ride, and I really want to show you how 
how this little boat uh, works in combat. Now, I, like I said before, the assault ships are good tanks. They, they have decent DPS, but the main thing about these ships, about the assault ships, is the, the tank, the robustness that they have. They can be very difficult to kill. And I initially thought to use a small armor repair, but I like to oversize my modules. And at first, you know, a small armor repair can be a good option, honestly. With a tank build, and you can do a tank build easily, but I just went full DPS because um, the modules that I use and the builds that I use do rely more on, on, on tank. Uh, from the from the speeds and modules than from the rigs although having tanky having tank rigs is also a really good idea 100% uh, can fit the ship like that perhaps you can change one you can re replace that one collision rig with a nanobot repair or the, the other one that improves the repair speed which will result in a much much better tank on on this little boat but I went with full DPS because in some cases the assault rigs can suffer with low DPS so in order to balance things out I went with the DPS rigs on the ship so how does this little boat work in combat well uh, I'm so far very satisfied with how the armor repair works I don't, I don't use any armor repair units, so this is basically the default value, the, the default armor repair performance. However, you can easily go with the Wheel of Steel core and get 21% extra armor repair. And you can also slap the armor repair unit. So you can get extra 40% armor repair out of this boat and you can repair about 500-600 armor every 5-4 seconds. And that's basically repairing like a third of this ship's armor in one cycle. And with this build, it really does not use a lot of capacitor. It's surprisingly highly stable. And you can run the repairer for a very long time. When you need to charge up the capacitor, it does get charged up fairly quickly because of the Nosferatu. And again, you can improve the Nosferatu performance with the general units. I haven't done that. The, the Nosferatu here is working in its uh, in its default values because I have the afterburn unit installed. And what was the? I think I forgot to change the plate unit. So I have the I have the armor, I have the afterburn unit and the armor plate unit. So kind of failed there with the unit layout, but you know doesn't matter. It still works really well. Now, the speed tank does help to reduce the incoming damage and the armor repair does do a solid job at repairing this little boat. Highly, the capacitor is highly stable, the DPS output is really solid. I would say its DPS in practical use is comparable to the DPS of some of the other faction frigates on the, on the previous list that I made. However, the faction frigates, with a couple exceptions, are not going to be as robust as one of these ships. Now, I believe that we will get tier 10 assault frigates. That's one of the one of the ships, one of the ship line that does miss in the game. And I believe the Rifter will be a assault frigate. Rifter 2 or Rifter Assault will be a tier 10 frigate. And I will probably be flying that boat. I expect that Rifter to have a bonus on on shield, on shield boosters. Actually, I'm not going to speculate much because uh, we already have, I think, two frigates that have a bonus on my apologies, one, the Merlin. The Merlin has a bonus on resistance, the Breacher Assault has a bonus on shield boosters that's uh, that's how it is so the rifter might be the rifter assault might be a full-on dps boat i guess we will find out when the ship is released 
but so far the Punisher Assault does punish those uh, those pirate ships here in, in this system, in this anomaly, or mission. And I have to admit, it is surprisingly satisfying to fly this little boat. And I believe in the hands of a right pilot, the Punisher Assault can do a lot of damage. Now, I ha had my fair share of encounters with Soul Frigates. One of my first kills with the RB, the, the original RB a long time ago, like 3 years ago, was a Punisher Assault. And you should avoid fighting cruisers that use drones because drones eat frigates alive. Basically drones are one of the main counters for smaller ships and avoid RBs, avoid prophecies, avoid statue ships, avoid uh, avoid ships that have nasty drones, but I would probably engage most cruisers. Of course, it all depends on the player and on the build and on the situation because they, there might there might be some uh, some builds that are built to counter small ships, which you always have to have to include. But if you can kite the brawling cruisers, then you should be good. They should not have enough tracking to hit you. Long range cruisers as well. If you orbit at zero, same can be said about battle cruisers, sniper battle cruisers, battle ships, and sniper battle ships. Although against battle ships, against sniper battle ships, orbit at zero with uh, with one scrambler, one web, and one nosferatu, just in case if they have a neutralizer, because the small nosferatu will maintain your capacitor even at zero. So that's the that's the reason why I like to use the small Nosferatus on frigates because they make your ship move. They keep your modules running, even if you have large neutralizers on on your ship. And in PvP, speed maneuverability is very important. In some cases, even more important than than raw DPS. In endurance battles. A endurance battle is basically when both ships are tanky and the ship with the better capacitor will win in the end, that's why it's called endurance battle. It's very important to know capacity management, it's very important to know when to repair, how to repair and how much to repair of course, basically to make the capacitor live as long as possible. And of course practice. Uh, does make that look easy. I have I had a lot of practice with uh, with my stabber too. That thing is so fun to fly. Unfortunately, if only stabs were a bit different. The only thing that prevents me from flying the stabber too for PvP mainly is uh, the fact that there is so many ships with stabs. However, on a good note, I also notice players using less stabs for some reason. And. That gives me a little bit of hope, you know, but every time I do take the stabber out, I encounter a ship with million stabs, but when I take out the uh, cinnabar with two stabbers, the ship has, the target has no stabs, so <laughs> that's usually how things go, but you know, that's fine. Eventually I will get a good target with stabber too, and I had that one 15 minute long battle with a drake. That was one of the best battles that I've ever had in this game, honestly. The day can I fought for 50 minutes straight. I was in the stabber, in the stabber too, and both our ships were a tank build. Both had about the same, uh, I would say the same tank. Although the Drake is much, much, much more slower because it's a battle cruiser. I was much more agile because uh, stabber is fast, and these ships orbit very quickly and we fought for 50 minutes eventually i got the drake i won eventually somehow but i'll never forget that battle that was one of the best fights that i've ever had in this game i was at the edge of my seat from start to finish and both of our capacitors were depleted till the very end was i was in low shield the drake was in low shield i just got a little bit lucky to get the barrage on time so that I could 
break the tank and just go through the hole, through, through the armor, through the hole, and that's how, that's how I won that battle. But that was, that was so much fun. This this game is so much fun when when you know what you're doing with your ship. Well, speaking of the ship, let's go back to the Punisher assault. I always, I always get carried away with with something uh, when I when I do this stuff with with these ships. Now you can do a beam laser PVE build, although in high sec you can easily go with pulse lasers because of the higher DPS. The Punisher assault can do the tier 6 storylines fairly well, it can do the tier 8 storylines fairly well and I would also say it probably can do the tier 10 once but it will probably take a while about the same time as with the Dramil. however for the tier 6 storylines, for the tier 8 storylines if you want a cheap robust little boat that can be difficult to catch after all remember this is a frigate and frigates are difficult to catch in low sec because of their small signature because of their speed maneuverability and if the if you don't have a good scanner or good scanning skills you will notify a frigate and since a lot of players hunt solo with a scanner in a course of cruiser or uh, in some cases battle cruiser or battleship they will notify a frigate, so if you are running a storyline and someone pops in your system with a Bellicos 2 cover tops or a RB2 cover tops and if they scan, you will get a ping and you can easily warp out. And of course, the signature on the scanner is uh, difficult by itself. Some frigates have three signatures, some have two, but the frigate signature is usually the one that looks very messy when you look at the scanning screen, so figuring out the scan the scanning lines is also a challenge by itself which does buy you more time to to warp out of the mission and wait for the hunter to leave so again a cheap robust frigate that has a very good chance to survive in low sec against pirates because you can easily warp away is is actually going for a very cheap I don't know how much these ships cost but they are definitely very good for the price and and I'm definitely interested in flying these ships I'm definitely interested uh, for the for the potential future tier 10 assault frigates I believe the tier 10 assault frigates are going to be very good probably about the same level as the assault cruisers again we will probably find that out very soon but the punisher assault does run really well i'm actually very happy with the result on this little boat it's a cheap cost effective and deadly Warp drive little boat so if you are looking for something different, for something new, for something that might be a bit more exciting, then the Punisher Assault is definitely one of the ships that I would recommend. It is definitely a good practicing ship, can be a very good PvP ship. It's very cheap, so if you lose it, you don't have to worry about it. It can also be used in a fleet, in a frigate fleet, which is one of the more fun fleets if you ask me, but in the end, uh, I really hope that you guys have enjoyed, also really hope that I was able to help you at building your own ship or as always I hope that I was able to inspire you to come up with your own build for, for the Punisher Assault or for any other ship that I show you here and with that being said, I love you all, play safe, stay safe and I'll see you next time.